Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. As you can see here, I've been getting a pile of mail recently, so I uh, figured I'd do a little bit of a mailbag video and share the opening with you. I had to rip a couple of them open already just to get the documentation out of them, but a uh, whole pile of things that we'll be doing reviews and using for projects going forward in the coming weeks and months. So uh, let's get a closer look and have a look what we've got. Looks like I've got six packages here. So they're all FedEx, which is actually there might be a UPS one or two, but most of them are FedEx. So let's just clear the ways and we'll start working through. Start with this one here. So I've already got it partly opened. Okay, this one is from Texas Instruments and it is an analog evaluation module. So uh, the TPS 92512EVM. This is a buck regulator that has a input range of 12 to 60 volts and can supply about 1.5 amps with an output of 9 to 24 volts. Really nice thing about this is that it supports PWM and analog uh, dimming. One of the reasons why I was talking to Texas Instruments about this is for things like LED control, um, uh, pre pre regulator for a power supply, where you could take uh, high voltage raw power and then using analog or PWM input reduce the output down to a uh, voltage just above the desired output and then use a standard linear regulator. So this is the board, it's uh, nice and small here, uh, for evaluating the use of it. So you've got the regulator on here, you've got a, that big chip is the inductor, you've got your input on one side, output on the other. So it would be quite interesting. So that's that one. I'm not gonna get into more details in that right now. So this is one from, oh, another Texas Instruments one. Doing a lot of work with these guys right now. Let's see what we have here. They actually have, this week, Texas Instruments, by the way, is running a power week, which is one of the reasons why I'm uh, getting to look at these and uh, gonna see if I can do some work with them in the up and coming. This one is a PWR770. It's another evaluation module, TPS54A20. And if I just look that up quickly, so this one is another buck converter using, it's a Swift series capacitor step down converter. And it actually will handle 10 amps with an eight to 14 volt input. Um, and it runs with about a 10 megahertz switching frequency. So this board a little bit bigger than the previous one. Tiny, tiny switch for, for this. Considering this thing is doing 10 amps, there's, oh, there's the, looks like the FET is over here. So yes, this one is an eight, volt to 14 volt input so it's not quite the same range as the one we just looked at and but the nice thing about this is it'll handle 10 amps so that's pretty impressive again we'll be looking at this through the power week and uh, beyond in separate videos you can see here a couple of current sense resistors in the bottom corner there lots of test points and everything else for evaluation huge tracks of course you're trying to drive 10 amps here so you want to have your main um, rails right through with um, plenty of capacity to handle that current without dropping it. Now this one is a capacitor step down. So one of the things that I notice here is that there is no inductor. It looks like it may be doing it capacitively. So that would be an interesting thing to look at. Anyway, that's package number two. So that's two analog evaluation modules to uh, look at. Okay, third package. What have you got here? This one is actually from Farnell, so element 14. So this getting away from being Texas Instruments one. So let's have a look what we have in here. This is a, um, from the element 14 community. And we have the XL star eight bit MCU based multifunctional system. Um, this looks like quite an interesting little evaluation board. Uh, obviously comes with a CD-ROM for the applications. Then we have other info. And here's a board. So this board, I believe, has an accelerometer and things on board. Um, 
And it's got a boat a battery connector. I guess you can run it off of a, a little button cell if you want to. So here's this board. I'll have to have a look at that. So a little star array, which I think is why it's called the XL star. Accelerometer in the middle. I think it comes with a test app and everything else. Um, on off switch, microcontroller, um, big pad for putting the button cell on to run it, USB connection, lots of I.O. So this is another evaluation module. So a little free scale evaluation board. So this will be really nice to have a look at and see what it can do. A little bit different, bunch of buttons, huge amount of LEDs and all the I.O. been brought out onto the edge connectors, which is a little unusual. Uh, done by Element 14 uh, and as a board, it's got their name right on it. So they're obviously involved in the creation of this product. I know a lot of you have been bugging me about getting back to the power supply project and I am actually in the process of doing that as we speak. So let's get to the next bag. Okay, we have another one from Farnell, so Element 14. And this, ah, I know what this is. This is actually a prize from a uh, competition. It was just a quick quick and dirty photo competition that we did with Element 14 in the community. And I was one of the top five photos. I didn't ultimately win out and get the grand prize, which would have included an actual LCD screen and things like that as well for a Raspberry Pi. But what I do have here is a Raspberry Pi camera V2, which is an eight megapixel uh, camera for the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi Noir camera V2, which is the one that does not have the infrared filter on it. So it's good for doing um, night vision and things like that. You just put some infrared LEDs and you could probably capture the nightlife and things without illuminating your backyard up and things. So we'll have a play with those in the future as well, in the, in the near future, hook them up to the Pi, see if we can get them working and um, have a play, see what the quality is like, because they're both 8 megapixel cameras, so it should be quite interesting. Anyway, that's those, that's cool. Alright, another one from Texas Instruments. So, haven't even opened this one yet. So, slacking. I'm too busy doing videos and various other things. So, aha. Uh -huh. A pair of sub gigahertz CC1310 launch pads. These are one of the latest um, launch pads from Texas Instruments and they have a built in sub gigahertz radio. The nice thing about these is Texas Instruments has had sub gigahertz radios for a long time as little uh, booster packs to go on uh, top of a launch pad. This is a launch pad itself that has the CC3100 on it. It's a launch XL, so it has the dual uh, rows of pins. Let me just open one of these up. I have an anti-static bench here, so don't worry about the static. And the nice thing is the chip. Um, I've used the CC3200 in a previous video a couple of weeks ago, which had a 2.5 gigahertz wireless on it. And the problem with that is that it's limited in range, like any Wi-Fi based system. Uh, you tend to run out of room about 30 meters away from the base station unless you're just out in an open field. Uh, with sub gigahertz radios, you can get a much, much bigger range. And uh, But even the uh, CC1100s, which is the ones that I was using in a previous video as well, they still were running out a little bit um, over maybe 80 or 100 th feet from where my lab office is. Um, out to the back of my house. I could not get anything working up into the garden or anything. These CC1310s are supposed to have a much, much better range um, on them. Now you've got the microcontroller in there and you've got the antenna and everything else all built into this. So this has the makings of a great IoT device. So I think I'm going to have a little look and play with these for the next TI Tuesday. So then there's a pair of them so I can have them talking to each other, which is really, really nice. All right, last box. This is a big one that came in recently and I suspect I know what's in here and uh, might not be able to show you. So this one, it is what I thought it was. This one is related to a power product. Um, and I'm not allowed to talk about it until 
tomorrow. Well, Wednesday. Sorry, not tomorrow. Wednesday. Uh, the 22nd of June. TI are in the middle of doing, or just started doing, their Power Week, where they're talking about um, power switching, uh, LEDs, you know, regulation, power control, all, the, all sorts of kinds of things to do with power um, for their products. And this is a new product that they're going to be announcing in that week. So I'm not allowed to talk about it until they've announced it. So you're going to have to wait and see. And I think that's all of the mailbag. So um, I hope you like this. If you don't like me doing a mailbag, I mean, I don't get enough mail to do one every week or anything like that. But, you know, little nice little pile here. Give you a taste of what's going to be coming up. So uh, we'll see you on the next one. In the meantime, i got to go and start doing my TI Tuesday video. And I think I'm going to look at those sub gigahertz radios.